I will always continue to say that riots are socially destructive and self-defeating. I'm still convinced that non-violence is the most potent weapon available to oppress people in their struggle for freedom and justice. I feel that violence will only create more social problems than they will solve. Do you think that race plays a part in wealth dis distribution or either a mindset that you can't Today? or cannot? Yeah. No. You don't? No. I don't. I don't. Hey, you and I, we're proof. Why would race have anything to do with it? Stick your, put your mind to what you want to do and go for that. Uh, it's kind of like religion to me. It's a good excuse for not getting there. Do you think that race plays a part in wealth dis distribution. We have to stop demonizing people and realize the biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized right up to the right. Where are we in the United States of America in race relations and what, what you see from day to day in your life? <sighs> Skip, they wouldn't want to ask me that. They wouldn't want my answer to represent it because God knows I have been nothing but blessed. My whole path, my, these 33 years have been nothing but a blessing. I have, I have never, and I'm, never is a strong word, I've never dealt with racism, and I'm glad I didn't have to. They're all hoping to start a race war. They're always trying to do that. This is a, this is a persistent infection in white American culture. This is, a, this is a persistent infection in white American culture. In my opinion, we don't need white people leading the Democratic Party right now. I'm here for the millennials and the brown folks. <laughs> what do you say to the people who, are, who dragged a poor white guy out of a car and beat him? Oh my goodness, go poor Trump? white people, please, oh my, stop. Stop it, Carl. What? There is a class of colored people who make a business of keeping the troubles, the wrongs, and the hardships of the Negro race before the public. Some of these people do not want the Negro to lose his grievances because they do not want to lose their jobs. There is a certain class of race problem solvers who don't want the patient to get well. That was said by Booker T. Washington. Here's what we've seen. Protests, people motivated to go out in every state from coast to coast, red states, blue states, cities, towns. Look at these pictures. Americans making it clear that systemic racism is an issue that they feel needs to be addressed. How are we going to get rid of racism until... Stop talking about it. I'm going to stop calling you a white man. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you to stop calling me a black man. As thousands and thousands of Americans peacefully protest racism and police brutality, when they won't even admit, admit, that systemic racism exists in our society and in our police departments. You know, it's, it's frustrating to me that people take race mm -hmm. and they make it personal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're, at a, we're at a loss in this generation. If you look at it in the 80s, Archie Bunker was a stark racist. Stark. If you don't know who Archie Bunker is, look him up. All in the Family, great show. The house. You don't call that crooked? No! That's looking out for number one. Where does that place Henry Jefferson? He's number two. <laughs> Why is he number two? Because, meathead, there can only be one number one and one number two. And life made Jefferson number two long before I come along. 
So I suppose that the Puerto Ricans are number three then, hmm? Well, no, not necessarily there, little girl. Your Puerto Ricans could be four. Your jobs and your chins could be three. Three A, three B. The Jeffersons, stark racist. Fred Sanford, stark racist. But you know what black people and white people did? They laughed. You watch 48 Hours with Eddie Murphy and Nick Nolte. Both of them hated each other because he was black and because he was white. You know what they did? They laughed. But I ask you what the racial breakdown was of your audience. Do you remember this? And you told me the only black face you could see in the whole audience was your makeup artist. I believe that's what you said. And she was in the front row, right? <laughs> A lot of white kids love rap. Yes. Explain that. What, what, what does that say to you? What's the message of it? What's the bigger picture of it? I don't want to be bashed because I don't want to sound like I'm on the wrong if there is a side, but I thought that was clearly a message that there was no such thing as racism. That's what I thought that was. The Reverend and his followers are the self-appointed Avengers. Justice! I think that hate is an emotion. I would love to use love, but if I've got to use hate, I'll deal with what my hand calls for. You know, I said, and it's probably getting me in trouble, but I said to some of my colleagues recently, say, so I know that it's an issue, but I've been, it seems like every single day on television I'm talking about race and it's because of the news cycle, it's in the news, but I'm so, sometimes I get so tired of talking about it, I want to I wanna just go, this is over, can we move on? And, and if you talk about it, it exists. Right. It's not like it exists and we refuse to talk about it, but making it a bigger issue than it needs to be is a problem. Um, I think that the criticism is helpful. Um, I also think that it might, um, I think of a lot of things. The first thing I think is that we actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, are trained Marxists. Um, we are uh, super uh, versed um, on sort of ideological theories. And right now, we are in a society where we can't have a conversation because no one's willing to listen. People are just shouting. People are just Whatever shouting. People are walking down the street, hashtagging everything, but no one's listening. Using wrong examples to present an argument leads us nowhere forward. I understand the emotion and I respect my opposition, but when you go into the areas of making false charges and living in the past, you do not address the issues of the present. I understand y'all upset, but like it was already said, I doubt y'all uh, half as upset as I am. So if I'm not over here wilding out, if I'm not over here blowing up stuff, if I'm not over here messing up my community, then what are y'all doing? And you know, incarceration rates in America has been a problem, especially as, as opposed to minorities. And Roman delves into this, the, the issues around the, the legal system. Do you think we've made any headway in the I legal I think it's system? more important to make headway in our own house. By the time the system comes into play, the damage is done. They're not locking up seven-year-olds. The breaking news as the George Floyd protests turn destructive in parts of Manhattan. This is just a snapshot of some of the damage the people will be waking up to in Soho. Through the night, protesters smashed into luxury stores, stealing items and clashing with police. In the 1960s, 80 plus percent of blacks were two parent homes. Today, that is reversed completely the other way. I was in Chicago a couple of three, four weeks ago, and we saw these little kids on bikes with masks on the side of their head like five or six of them, and the driver said, yeah, they're little yummies. I said, who? He said, little, little yummies. Look up, Google little yummy. Mm. Little yummy was an 11-year-old murderer. 
Wow. And you look at his picture, you'll see the headshot of him, and he's like this. And he got murdered at 11 by a 14-year-old. Wow. Who's doing life now and a 16-year-old. That makes no sense. You, you blame the system? Where was his father? And check out some of the destruction left behind. You see this police car right here that was uh, torched amid those protests for standing outside the Bloomingdale's on Broadway right now. No one wants to talk about perception when it comes to racial profiling. No one wants to talk about stereotypes when it comes to racial profiling. Blacks are convinced that the number one issue facing the country right now is social justice, racist white cops, uh, discrimination, systemic uh, racism, microaggression, whatever new word they come up with, and it's a bunch of nonsense. Rioters smash windows all along Broadway, Spring and West Broadway, high in stores like Gucci, Versace, Tory Burch broken into and looted. This is what I know. I'm a certified scuba diver. My first day of class, yes. they told me this. When you're in shark infested waters, mm -hmm. everything in that water is considered a threat until proven otherwise. If it's a guppy, it could be a shark until you know it's a guppy. <laughs> and I think as black men, we need to realize we're in shark infested waters. And if we don't sit our young men down and we don't talk to them about perception, and we don't talk to them about stereotypes, we're doing them a huge disservice. Finding areas where police are not present and causing chaos. We did see some protesters try to confront the vandals. One man even discharged a fire extinguisher, obviously to no avail. There is damage everywhere you look honestly it looks like a war zone it starts in the house it starts in the home and yeah well well my father got locked up well where was his father yeah you know that, 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 like i i did talk about my three closest friends and they did you know 15 to 25 one did 28 this and that i was the only one of the three that had a father in my life even though my parents were together but i still had a father who was a gentle man and a good example yeah. and they didn't we can blame the system if we want, but they didn't lock any of us up at seven. Yeah. We were all doing enough to get locked up at 13. My parents sent me in another direction. They didn't have anybody to help them and they kept doing what they was doing and the system got them. So I, I don't, the, the system is rigged, but why, all the more reason not to help it. Looting now underway in Beverly Hills. Mayhem in Beverly Hills as looters storm the luxury clothing store Alexander McQueen and make off with thousands of dollars worth of goods. The number one problem domestically facing this country is a breakdown of the family. And uh, President Obama said it, I didn't. Uh, a, a, a black kid, or a kid, not just a black kid, a kid raised without a dad, is five times more likely to be poor and commit crimes, nine times more likely to drop out of school, and 20 times more likely to end up in jail. So you're far more likely to end up in jail without having a dad than you are because of a white racist cop. In upscale Santa Monica, devastating destruction as the looters attack business after business. Hey guys, you see this? Extraordinary footage shows a woman using her body to try to stop looters, one armed with a hammer, from smashing their way into a sporting goods store. She's violently pulled away in this dramatic footage shot by Fox 11 in Los Angeles. Despite her efforts, looters make off with bicycles and backpacks. Half the homicides in this country are committed by and against black people. Last year, there were 14,000 homicides, not talking about suicides, I'm talking about homicides. Mm -hmm. um, half of them were black, 96% of them black on black of that 7,000. Where's the black, black Lives Matter people on that? We stand at a critical point in history. Give black people their rights or we will burn this country to ashes. Or we will burn this country to ashes. What, what happens with young black men, everything is susceptible to the question of your manhood. Mm. And what's going on in these streets ain't got nothing to do with my manhood. Interesting. If I'm going to fight a police, I'm going to fight him in a controlled environment, a court of law. I'm not going to fight him on the streets. At Patagonia, they flee with surfboards. These looters make their getaway on a motorcycle. Bedlam at this van store. Looters pile out with shoe boxes. Watch this dude slip and fall. This guy grabs a shoe box, then tells a KCBS reporter why he's doing it. People need to start chaos in order to make their point across. Let's switch it up, y'all. Let's switch it up. Yeah. Amen. Do this peacefully. Please. My brother moved here from Houston. And I used to talk to him on the phone. He, 
He loved it here. He started driving truck. He 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 was he was good. So I don't I highly doubt. No, I don't know. I know. He would not want y'all to be doing this. Aerial shots show looters pouring out of Santa Monica Place Mall. One street over, I spotted people casually strolling with allegedly stolen goods. This guy proudly showed off his box to me. And this disturbing footage shows a man using an aerosol can to torch a San Bernardino DMV. Today, I'm getting an up-close look inside a CVS that's utterly trashed. In Baltimore, where Freddie Gray was killed, uh, Freddie Gray died in a van, I shouldn't say was killed, died in a van. Yeah. You have a city that's 45% uh, black, uh, city council is 100% Democrat. The majority of city council is black. The top cop at the time was, was black. The number two cop was black. The majority of the command staff is black. The, the mayor is black. Uh, the AG is black. Uh, and yet here we are talking about racism. I mean, it's, it's absurd. Black History Month you find ridiculous. Why? You're going to relegate my history to a month? Oh, come well, on. What do oh. you do with yours? What, which month is White History Month? No, well, no, 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 come on, tell me. Well, the, the, I'm Jewish. Okay, which I'm month is Jewish History Month? Uh, there isn't one. Oh, oh, why not? Yeah. Do you want one? No, no, no. I, 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 I don't either. I don't want a Black History Month. Black history is American history. Abraham Lincoln, as my colleague said, fought a war to preserve the Union. That republic allowed for the people of the United States, <clears throat> under our Constitution, to amend it, therefore removing slavery, and then moving forward to the Voting and Civil Rights Act, and also the suffrage movement for women. At the same time, and you would say it as strong as anyone, um, it's no excuse for bombing and, and destroying your own neighborhood. Uh, and, that is and, and, and burning down wherever it's happening, the hardest, the hardest burning down storefronts and stores that people with mobs who, is how they get turned into that. Yeah. Um, what's to be gained? You, know, you stop for one split second to think uh, burning and looting doesn't help you in any way. So I will continue to condemn riots and continue to say to my brothers and sisters that this is not the way. Continue to affirm that there is another way.